What's up, Ninja Nerds? In this video, we're gonna talk about the eye. So the first thing we're gonna talk about here is number one. If you look here, guys, is the lacrimal glands. The lacrimal glands are innervated by the seventh cranial nerve, which is the facial nerve. And what happens is whenever these guys produce this fluid, they produce what's called a lacrimal fluid, and that lacrimal fluid actually moves across this structure here called the cornea. Now, as it moves across the cornea, it moves into these little black holes you see here. You see that one right there, and there's actually one up here on the top, too. These two little holes, one right there again, and then one up here is actually called the lacrimal puncta. Okay, so it's called the lacrimal puncta. So again, which one's the lacrimal puncta? That one right there is the inferior lacrimal puncta, and this one up here is the superior lacrimal puncta. Okay? Now, these guys drain into these tiny little canals here. You see this one up here on the top? That's the superior lacrimal canaliculi. And then there's one down here on the bottom, which is the inferior lacrimal canaliculi. Okay? And then what happens is these canaliculi come together and they dump into what's called this little lacrimal duct piece here. And that duct empties into the sac called the lacrimal sac. When it empties into the lacrimal sac, it then is emptied into the nasal cavity through what's called the nasolacrimal duct. Okay? All right, so that covers that structure. Now, what else do we have here? Uh, if you see here, this is actually called the palpebra with the superior palpebra actually. So 11 is the superior palpebra, which is another fancy word for eyelid. Down here, we got the inferior palpebra, which is, again, a fancy word for it saying inferior eyelid, okay? That little fleshy part right there is actually called the lacrimal caruncle. So it's that little fleshy, beady part in the middle of the eye. It's called the lacrimal caruncle. All right, so what else do we have? We also, if you notice here, we're going to have this muscle right here moving all the way back here. It's connecting to the palpebra, to the superior palpebra specifically, and it elevates the superior palpebra. So what's called the levator palpebra superioris. And it's actually innervated by the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve. Now what I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna take this structure here off so that we can look inside at a couple other membranes. All right, guys, so now we're taking a look inside here. So again, you can actually see the palpebra, the inner, inner side of the palpebra. And this is just a little connective tissue membrane on side of it. So it's kinda like the inner part of that little palpebra. Uh, what is important though is this little kind of like rigidy structure here. So you see this like a rigidy structure that's kind of making that little noise. That structure right there is actually called the conjunctiva. But it's the part of the conjunctiva that's actually connected to the palpebra. And that's actually called the palpebral conjunctiva. There is another conjunctiva because the conjunctiva is a double layered membrane. There's one that actually is lining the palpebra and then there's one that's actually connecting to the sclera. And that's called the bulbar conjunctiva. Okay, but again, you can see the inner part of the palpebra here, and you can see a little connective tissue membrane. And then again, you can see the conjunctiva, which is this is specifically the palpebral conjunctiva. So like superior palpebral conjunctiva, inferior palpebral conjunctiva. And again, one more time, the conjunctiva is a double layered membrane. One covers the palpebra, and the other one covers the sclera, which is called the bulbar conjunctiva. All right, and again, you can even see the lacrimal glands here too. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the actual extraocular eye muscles now. All right, so now taking kind of a look at the other side here, you can, we're gonna go over the extraocular eye muscles. So if you look here, this is again, that's the levator palpebra superioris right there, right there. And again, that was the one that was innervated by the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve, okay? Now right underneath it, you can actually see this guy's actually connecting to the sclera right there. This is one of the extraocular eye muscles, number one. It actually moves this way and it's moving underneath the levator palpebra superioris. That muscle right there is actually called the superior rectus. And whenever it contracts, it pulls like the eyeball upward. So it kind of like elevates the eyeball or, or superiorly rotates it, if you will. Okay, but it basically is trying to pull the eyeball and rotate it upwards. So that's the, in, that's the uh, superior rectus there. Okay, so again, superior rectus here. And the superior rectus is gonna be innervated by the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve, all right? Then if we come over here on number four, so it's again a little connective tissue here, like the tendon connecting to the sclera there. This whole guy over here is the lateral rectus. So the lateral rectus is going to be important because he helps to be able to, if you will, like abduct the eye. So he kind of rotates the eye laterally or outwards. And so he's actually innervated by the abducens nerve, which is the sixth cranial nerve. A uh, way that I remember that is LR6, lateral rectus, sixth cranial nerve abducens. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece off here and then the, the actual lateral rectus so that you guys can see some of these other extraocular eye muscles. Alright, so if you guys look here, number six, number six right there actually kind of goes this way, this way, this way, and kind of up here in the back. That's right there is actually the inferior oblique. Now the inferior oblique is actually a cool muscle. Whenever he contracts, 
he actually, because of the way he's attached to the uh, sclera, he actually pulls the eyeball upward, like kind of like rota uh, rotates it superiorly. And at the same time as it rotates it superiorly, it actually kind of pulls it out laterally at the same time. So the inferior oblique does what's called superior and lateral rotation, all right? And the inferior oblique is also innervated by the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at some of these other muscles over here now. So if you look, guys, you guys can see a couple other muscles that we didn't talk about. You can see this one right here, kind of running from still underneath the bottom here, number two. Number two is the inferior rectus. And the inferior rectus, when he actually uh, contracts, he actually pulls the eyeball, like rotates it downwards. So he kind of like causes a depression of the eyeball, if you will, or kind of like I said, rotates it downwards. And the inferior rectus is innervated again by the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve. You can even see here, this is actually the optic nerve right there. The optic nerve is actually gonna be able to pull some of that uh, in information from the retina and sends it down through action potentials. All right, and we'll talk about that. And then if you look over here, number three, number three is actually called the medial rectus. Now the medial rectus is actually going to be important because he's innervated, again, by the third cranial nerve, which is the oculomotor nerve. And what the medial rectus does is, because of his attachment to the sclera, he actually pulls the eyeball inward, so he medially rotates it, or adducts the eyeball, okay? All right, so last extraocular eye muscle is gonna be, if you look here, you can actually see his tendon. This is the superior oblique tendon. Now the superior oblique tendon is, is pretty cool because it actually points medially, so it helps you to determine that if this is pointing medially, that's where the medial rectus is, okay? So it's a good way to be able to determine if this is the medial versus lateral. Another thing is the superior oblique tendon attaches to this muscle that you can see right here. This muscle right there is actually called the superior oblique. Now the tendon actually runs through this little like thing called the trochlea. And what that trochlea allows for is whenever the superior oblique contracts, it pulls the eyeball and rotates it downward, inferiorly, and rotates it out laterally. So, it's, it's, so the superior oblique causes inferior and lateral rotation. And the superior oblique is innervated by the fourth cranial nerve, which is the trochlear nerve. You can remember this by SO4. Superior oblique, fourth cranial nerve, trochlear nerve. All right, so now that we've, saw, we've seen all of these structures, let's, let's take a look at some of the structures uh, outside on the fibrous tunic, and then we'll go inside. So now, guys, if we take a look here, we're going to look at the fibrous tunic. Now, the fibrous tunic is made up of uh, two components here. So this one right here is this little clear epithelial tissue. It's actually five layers thick, and it's called the cornea. So this is one part of the fibrous tunic. The other part, and again, the cornea is five layers thick. The top layer is the epithelial tissue layer, okay? But again, and then this right here is the sclera. Now the sclera is pretty thick layer too. It's an opaque connective tissue. And it's one of the points that allows for a lot of the connections here of a lot of these extraocular eye muscles. Okay, so now that we've seen the fibrous tunic, now we're gonna go inside and take a look at some of the other structures. Specifically, we're gonna start with the vascular tunic. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at the vascular tunic. Now this is actually, so to start it all off, you see this dark, kind of like purple pigmented membrane with a lot of blood vessels on it. This is actually called the choroid. So the choroid is really, really important. And we'll talk about that in a second. Another part here, the vascular tunic is this white structure that you see here. This is an external view of what's called the ciliary body. So this, again, this white little ring here. So it's an external view of the ciliary body. Now the ciliary body is made up of two different components. One is the ciliary muscles. And the ciliary muscles, when they contract, they alter the shape of this structure called the lens. And we'll show you that, which is called accommodation. The second thing is the ciliary processes, and the ciliary processes are actually going to be made up of these epithelial cells, and they secrete what's called aqueous humor. Now the aqueous humor is also gonna be an important component, and we'll talk about that in vis uh, visual uh, physiology. Okay, and then the next thing here is you're gonna see this structure called the iris, and the iris is important because it's a nice pigmented muscular layer here and it's really important for being able to contract, to cause constriction and dilation, to be able to control the amount of light that's entering in through this hole here called the pupil. All right, now we're gonna take a look at inside at the other parts of the vascular tunic. All right guys, so all I'm gonna do right here to show you guys the inside is I'm just gonna take this and flip it inwards. Let me just sit this in here so it's easier to see. Okay, so now if we look inside, this is just an inner view of the iris. It's just an inner view of it, right? And this is just an internal view of the ciliary body. 
which again is made up of the ciliary muscles and the ciliary processes, right? If you see this dark brown membrane here, uh, there's actually two layers of the retina, and we're going to talk about that next, which is the sensory tunic. Now, the retina has two layers. One layer is actually going to be the outer pigmented layer, which is kind of starting right here, this little browner part here, okay? And then deeper to that, the inner layer here is actually going to be the inner neural layer. This is what's going to consist of a lot of those photoreceptors, rods and cones, okay? And we'll talk about that. All right, so again, real quick, iris, pupil hole, uh, internal view of the ciliary body, and again, this is that outer pigmented layer of the retina, and this is the inner neural layer of the retina. Now we're going to take a look at the lens and the posterior segment. So now let's take this guy out. All right, guys, so I just wanted to show you here. Now the posterior segment uh, begins whenever you go after the lens. Now this structure right here that I'm kind of wiggling here is the lens. The lens is a crystalline structure. It has a lot of proteins and a lot of different structures in it, uh, components that make it up. And it's important for being able to refract the light rays, okay? So it's a very important structure, and what it does, it helps you to separate the eye into two segments, the anterior segment and the posterior segment. All right, so let me go ahead and get the lens out of the way for right now. Okay, so now that we've done that, like I said, the lens is important for doing what? For separating the eye into two segments. One segment is the anterior segment, and the anterior segment goes from the uh, front of the lens all the way to the cornea. And then that segment is actually separated into two chambers. Because what happens is, as you're going from the inner side of the lens to the cornea, you run into the iris. And the iris actually helps to separate the anterior segment into a posterior and anterior chamber. So for example, from the inner part of the lens to the actual inner part of the iris is the posterior chamber of the anterior segment. And then from the outer part of the iris to the actual cornea is going to be the anterior chamber of the anterior segment. And then from the lens all the way to the, the retina is going to be the posterior segment. So you know what occupies this uh, posterior segment? It's this thing right here called the vitreous body or the vitreous humor. This stuff's really important because you make it once and you never make it again. So after this is made, you'll, you'll have all the vitreous humor that you'll ever have from the time of birth all the way until death. Okay, so it's a really important structure. It actually helps to be able to transmit the light rays uh, specifically onto the retina. It helps, helps to be able to cause, uh, keep the retina in place. So a very important structure. Also helps to prevent the scattering of light. Okay, so that's the vitreous humor of the vitreous body. Now I'm going to take that out of the way. And then we're going to finish up by taking a look here at the actual retina. All right, so the sensory tunic is the last tunic we have to talk about. Now, we already said it's made up of the inner pigment, I'm sorry, the inner neural layer and the outer pigmented layer. You can't see the outer pigmented layer here, but you can see the inner neural layer. It's all this pink with all the blood vessels that you see here. Okay, that's the inner neural layer of the retina. And again, it's consisting of rods and cones, which are the photoreceptors. Now, the cones are actually found inside of this yellow spot here. So that yellow spot that I just poked, again, right there, it's actually called the macula lutea. Inside of the macula lutea is what's called the fovea centralis. Now, the fovea centralis is where the highest concentration of cones are. And cones are really important for color vision and bright vision and very uh, precise, fine vision. Okay? Now, rods, on the other hand, are more for like your fuzzy, your dim, your darker vision, and they're kind of concentrated more on the periphery okay, of the eye. Another thing right here is you can see the optic disc or the blind spots where the, the uh, optic nerve is piercing through the back. Okay? Now, let's go ahead and finish this video up by looking at the optic nerve and the optic chiasma. All right, guys, so if you look here, this is the optic nerve, uh, number 16. And again, it's taking a lot of those visual impulses from the retina and carrying it down this optic nerve. So it's carrying action potentials down it. Now, let's say that this is the optic nerve from the right eye. And let's say that there's another one over here from the left eye. As the two optic nerves come towards one another, they reach this point here at the middle called the optic chiasma. So the optic chiasma is actually where the, the optic nerves cross. So for example, if the right optic nerve was coming this way, it would cross and go to the left side. If the left optic nerve was coming this way, it would cross and go to the right side. Okay, so that's a very important structure there called the optic chiasma. All right, engineers, so to wrap this video up, guys, let's go ahead and take and follow a light ray all the way through the eye into the optic nerve. So if we were to follow that, the, um, specifically what happens is the light rays will actually move through the cornea, and then as it moves through the cornea, it actually will move through the pupil hole, as it moves through the pupil hole, it'll then hit the lens. The lens will then refract that uh, light rays to where it'll hit a specific point on the retina. When it hits the retina, we'll talk about this in visual physiology, but specifically what's happening 
is that when the light rays hit the retina, they hit what's called the rods and the cones. When it hits the rods and the cones, those then, by virtue, stimulate what's called the bipolar neurons. And those bipolar neurons then stimulate what's called the ganglion cells. And whenever it stimulates the ganglion cells, the axons of the ganglion cells will come together to form what's called the optic nerve. And then the optic nerve will then exit out through the sclera, and then it'll come together and cross with the uh, optic nerve, well, you know, if you have your right optic nerve and your left optic nerve, the fibers will cross at the optic chiasma, it'll then head specifically to the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus and then to the primary visual cortex of the occipital lobe. All right, engineers, I really hope this helped. I hope it made sense. Until next time.